Hey, we're going to do some chemistry here. Don't get scared, you're not gonna get your hands wet. Well, I start with this interesting little molecule. Only two carbons, one oxygen and four hydrogens. This is ethylene oxide. Believe it or not, it is one of the most widely produced chemicals in the world. Why? Because it has so many different uses. Now, here's an interesting feature here. Carbon atoms don't like to be constrained in a system like this. That's unstable. This wants to pop open. So ethylene oxide is very reactive. So for example, you react it with water, the ring opens up and we get this. What is this? Ethylene glycol. This is antifreeze. And you can imagine how much the world needs that. Now here's an issue. When you make ethylene glycol from ethylene oxide, there's a side product that forms. And it's not hard to see what that side product is. It is called dioxane. Dioxane. What happens is that two of these react together to give you this. And you can visualize that. Well, what's the problem? The problem is that this stuff is carcinogenic, at least in animals it triggers cancer. How does it do that? Well, it reacts with DNA. You know what DNA is? That's the master molecule of life. Well, dioxane can bite into it and cause it to undergo mutations, which can lead to, to cancer. So why is this an issue? Because whenever you use ethylene oxide to make anything, there will be a trace of dioxane that ends up in the final product. So for example, this long molecule, you use this all the time. This is sodium laureth sulfate. This is the stuff that you find in detergents, uh, like this, dishwashing detergents, you find it in laundry detergents. Very interesting molecule. One end of it dissolves in water, the other end dissolves in oil, and the oil gets stripped off the surface when you rinse with water. But here's the issue. As you can see, there is a fragment in here that is actually made from this molecule, gets embedded in here, which means that there will always be a side product, which is the dioxane, whenever you make sodium laureth sulfate. This is the reason why seen headlines like this. New York State has banned some detergents, the ones that have more than two parts per billion of dioxane. This has caused quite a stir in, among consumers who all of a sudden feel that they're using toxic detergents. No, you don't have to worry about the detergent having enough dioxane in it to cause any health problems. The problem is that stuff that we use goes down the drain and there it can get into groundwater and that's how it can come back and bite us so what do we do banning ethylene oxide no we can't ban ethylene glycol we need antifreeze we need detergents we use ethylene glycol to sterilize instruments for hospitals so no we're not going to ban that however it is possible to make sure that it does not produce the side product, the dioxane, in its chemical reactions. And there are technical ways to solve that problem. And the industry is working on that. And that's why we will see uh, that uh, they will take into account the ban in New York State, and they will work hard to get down below the two parts per billion level. That's the story. And as with so many things in science, it's a question of weighing risk against benefit. We need ethylene oxide to sterilize medical instruments. We need ethylene glycol. We need detergents. We don't need dioxane as a contaminant. Chemists will figure out how to get rid of it.